Hey there, fellow Redditors. I've been a park ranger for most of my adult life, and I've seen my fair share of bizarre and unexplainable things out in the wilderness. But there's one experience that still sends shivers down my spine every time I think about it, the encounter with a mysterious creature deep within the heart of Blackwood Forest. You see, Blackwood Forest is nestled snugly in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, stretching across the border between West Virginia and Virginia. It's a place of breathtaking beauty, with towering ancient trees, cascading waterfalls, and an eerie calm that seems to envelop you as you step into its depths. I'd spent countless hours patrolling the trails, guiding hikers, and ensuring the safety of the wildlife that called the forest home. I thought I'd seen it all, until that fateful evening. It was the tail end of a scorching summer day, the sun was beginning to dip behind the horizon, casting long shadows across the forest floor. I was wrapping up my final patrol for the day, making sure all the campers had extinguished their fires and were settling in for the night. I had this sense of unease, like I was being watched, but I brushed it off as my mind playing tricks on me. That is until I stumbled upon something that would forever change my perception of reality. As I was making my way along a narrow trail that wound its way through a particularly dense thicket, I caught a flicker of movement out of the corner of my eye. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest, and turned my head slowly towards the source of the movement. There, standing amidst the underbrush, was a creature unlike anything I'd ever seen before. It was massive, easily towering over me at a height of at least eight feet. Its body was covered in a coarse, matted fur that seemed to blend seamlessly with the surrounding foliage. Its limbs were long and sinewy, and its hands, if you could call them that, ended in twisted, claw-like appendages. Its head was elongated and pointed, with a set of gleaming, amber eyes that seemed to bore into my very soul. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I was trapped in a paralyzing grip of fear as the creature stared at me with an intensity that sent chills down my spine. It was like time had come to a standstill, and all that existed was me and this otherworldly being locked in a silent and terrifying confrontation. After what felt like an eternity, the creature's lips curled back into a grotesque semblance of a smile, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. My fight-or-flight instincts finally kicked in, and I stumbled backward, tripping over a fallen log and crashing onto the ground. When I regained my senses and looked back up, the creature was gone, vanished into the shadows as quickly as it had appeared. I scrambled to my feet, my heart racing, and stumbled my way back to the ranger station. My mind was a whirlwind of confusion and disbelief. What had I just witnessed? Was it some sort of wild animal that had mutated into this monstrosity? Or was it something else entirely, something not of this world? I immediately reported my encounter to my superiors, but their reaction was far from what I had expected. Instead of launching an investigation or sending a team out to search for the creature, I was met with silence and a steely gaze that told me to drop the matter. It was as if they knew something, something they weren't willing to share. Over the next few weeks, I became obsessed with uncovering the truth behind the creature in Blackwood Forest. I scoured old newspapers, poured over government documents, and even reached out to conspiracy theorists who claimed to have insider knowledge about classified experiments. It was a rabbit hole of information, much of it contradictory and maddeningly elusive. One name kept cropping up in my research, Dr. Richard Thornwood, a former government scientist rumored to have been involved in top-secret experiments in the area. According to some accounts, Thornwood had been conducting experiments on wildlife, attempting to create super-soldiers that could withstand extreme conditions. Others claimed he was dabbling in forbidden knowledge, attempting to breach the boundaries between dimensions. I managed to track down Thornwood's last known location to a remote cabin on the outskirts of a small town in West Virginia. I made the journey there, hoping to finally get some answers. The cabin was dilapidated and overgrown with vines, a silent sentinel of the secrets it held within its walls. As I cautiously stepped inside, the air was thick with a musty smell, and the dim light filtered through the dusty windows. I began sifting through piles of old notebooks, yellow documents, and discarded equipment, desperately hoping to find a clue that would connect the dots. And then, buried beneath a stack of faded photographs, I found it, a journal belonging to Dr. Richard Thornwood. 
The journal was a treasure trove of cryptic entries, detailing experiments that bordered on the realm of science fiction. Thornwood wrote of harnessing the power of ancient rituals to open doorways to other dimensions, of merging DNA from different species to create new forms of life, and of encountering entities that defied all rational explanation. It was a chilling account of a mind that had delved too deep into the unknown. But the most shocking revelation was yet to come. In one entry, Thornwood mentioned an incident in Blackwood Forest, an experiment gone horribly wrong that had unleashed an entity, the very same creature I had encountered. According to Thornwood's account, the creature was a guardian, a protector of the forest that had been drawn into our world through the rift he had created. I was piecing together the puzzle, connecting the dots between the creature, Thornwood's experiments, and the government's silence. It became clear that there was a cover-up, a deliberate attempt to conceal the truth about what had transpired in Blackwood Forest. The creature was real, and its existence posed a threat to the delicate balance between our world and the unknown dimensions Thornwood had tampered with. My discovery sent a chill down my spine. I felt like I was being watched, like unseen eyes were tracking my every move. Paranoia gnawed at my mind, and I became consumed by the need to expose the truth, no matter the cost. I started compiling my findings, organizing the evidence, and preparing to blow the lid off the government's dark secrets. But before I could take any action, my world was turned upside down. Late one night, as I sat hunched over my desk, meticulously documenting my research, I heard a soft rustling outside my window. I glanced up, my heart racing, and saw a pair of amber eyes staring back at me from the darkness. I froze, my breath caught in my throat, as the creature materialized before me. It stood just outside my window, its monstrous form illuminated by the pale moonlight. Its lips curled into that grotesque smile once again, and a feeling of dread washed over me. I was face to face with the guardian of Blackwood Forest, and I knew that my pursuit of the truth had brought me to the brink of something far beyond my comprehension. The creature's eyes bore into mine, and a voice, a voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the void, whispered in my mind. It spoke of ancient packs, of cosmic balance, and of the consequences of meddling with forces that should never be unleashed. Its words were a warning, a chilling reminder that some truths were never meant to be uncovered. And then, as quickly as it had appeared, the creature was gone, fading back into the shadows from whence it came. I was left trembling, my mind reeling from the encounter. The Guardian had delivered its message, and I was left with a choice, to continue down the path of discovery, risking my sanity in the very fabric of reality, or to heed its warning and let the secrets of Blackwood Forest remain buried. In the end, I chose the latter. I destroyed my research, burned the journals, and erased any trace of my investigation. I knew that some truths were too dangerous to be exposed, that the Guardian's warning was a reminder of the fragile balance that held our world together. And so, I retreated from the shadows, leaving behind the enigma of Blackwood Forest and the creature that guarded its secrets. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that those amber eyes still watch me, from the depths of the wilderness and the beyond. The memory of that encounter lingers, a haunting reminder of the boundaries that should never be crossed, and the mysteries that are better left untouched. So, my fellow Redditors, take heed, there are truths out there that are best left undiscovered, and guardians that stand vigilant in the shadows, protecting us from the horrors that lie beyond our understanding. If you enjoy listening to horror stories for hours at a stretch, then you are at a right place. Subscribe to Mr. Scare right away. Hey there, folks. Pull up a chair and gather around, because I've got a bone-chilling tale that'll make your hair stand on end. You see, I've spent a good chunk of my life as a ranger, patrolling the rugged landscapes of some of the most untamed regions in the good old USA. But there's one story that I've never shared before, a story that involves a chilling encounter with a creature that defies all explanation. So buckle up, because we're heading deep into the heart of the Rocky Mountains, to a place they call Mount Frost Peak. Mount Frost Peak rises majestically on the border between Colorado and Wyoming, a towering sentinel that pierces the heavens with its snow-capped peak. Now, I've seen my fair share of blizzards and bone-chilling temperatures, but nothing could have prepared me for what I'd experience on that fateful winter expedition. 
It was a clear day, the sun casting a golden glow over the pristine snowscape. I was leading a group of seasoned hikers on a trail that wound its way up the mountain, the air crisp and invigorating. We were all bundled up in layers of thermal clothing, armed with ice axes and crampons, ready to conquer the unforgiving terrain that awaited us. As we ascended higher and higher, the air grew thinner, and the landscape transformed into a breathtakingly beautiful yet treacherous wonderland. The wind whispered through the pines, and the snow sparkled like a million diamonds in the sunlight. But there was an eerie stillness, a sense that we were trespassing in a realm where nature reigned supreme. As the day wore on, we reached a particularly narrow and steep section of the trail. It was there, clinging to the rocky face of the mountain, that I caught a fleeting glimpse of movement out of the corner of my eye. I squinted, trying to make sense of what I'd seen, and that's when I saw it, a massive, hulking figure, covered in matted fur, disappearing into a snow-covered crevice. My heart raced as I exchanged stunned glances with the hikers. Did you see that? One of them whispered, his voice trembling with a mix of excitement and fear. I nodded, my mind racing to comprehend what I'd just witnessed. There was only one creature that could match that description, the legendary Yeti. For a moment, the forest seemed to hold its breath, as if the very mountains were watching us. The hikers were a mix of exhilaration and anxiety, their excitement at the prospect of encountering a real-life Yeti tinged with the reality of our precarious situation. We decided to press on, cautiously navigating the trail as we kept our eyes peeled for any further signs of the mysterious creature. As the day waned and the temperature dropped, we reached a small clearing nestled between two jagged peaks. It was there that we stumbled upon a series of massive footprints, imprinted deep into the snow. The prints were unlike anything I'd ever seen before, massive, with long claws that dug into the frozen ground. The hikers and I exchanged nervous glances, the reality of our situation sinking in. We were in the territory of a creature that had long eluded human understanding, a guardian of the mountains that had captured our imaginations for generations. We set up camp in the clearing, our senses heightened as we huddled together for warmth. The crackling of the campfire was the only sound that pierced the silence of the night, and our eyes darted to every rustling leaf and distant sound. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that the Yeti was out there, observing our every move from the shadows. The night was long and restless, with the wind howling through the peaks like a mournful wail. I tossed and turned in my sleeping bag, my mind racing with a mix of awe and unease. What did the Yeti want? Was it a creature of myth and legend, or something more? The answers eluded me, as if the mountain itself held its secrets close. The following morning, we continued our ascent, our excitement overshadowed by the tension that hung in the air. The landscape grew more desolate and unforgiving, the snow-covered rocks a stark reminder of the harsh realities of nature. And then, as we rounded a bend in the trail, we came face to face with the creature that had haunted our thoughts and dreams. There it stood, towering over us like a mythical giant, its fur a mix of white and gray, blending seamlessly with the snow-covered landscape. Its eyes, deep, intelligent eyes, locked onto mine, and a shiver ran down my spine. The Yeti regarded us with a mix of curiosity and weariness, its massive frame betraying a sense of power and primal wisdom. Time seemed to stand still as we stared at each other, two worlds colliding in a frozen tableau. I could feel the weight of centuries of mystery and myth, a connection that transcended language and understanding. The Yeti wasn't a monster or a threat, it was a living, breathing enigma, a guardian of the mountains that had witnessed the passage of time itself. And then, with a graceful and surprisingly gentle movement, the Yeti turned and disappeared into the wilderness, leaving us in stunned silence. We stood there for a long while, absorbing the magnitude of what we just witnessed. It was a fleeting encounter, a glimpse into a world that few had ever glimpsed, and a reminder that the mysteries of our planet are far from unraveled. We descended the mountain, our minds racing with a mix of awe, wonder, and reverence. The encounter with the Yeti had left an indelible mark on each of us, a shared memory that would bind us together forever. As we returned to civilization, we were met with skepticism and disbelief, but we knew the truth, that there are still secrets in the wild places of this world, waiting to be discovered by those who dare to venture into the unknown. So there you have it, my friends, 
the tale of my encounter with the legendary Yeti on the slopes of Mount Frost Peak. A story of mystery, wonder, and a connection that transcends the boundaries of our understanding. So the next time you're out in the wilderness, remember, you never know what secrets might be lurking just beyond the next ridge, waiting to be uncovered by those brave enough to seek them out. Greetings, fellow adventurers and seekers of the unknown. Settle in, for I have a riveting tale that will send a chill down your spine and make your heart race with anticipation. I've wandered the untamed landscapes of our great nation, but the story I'm about to share is one that has haunted my thoughts ever since that fateful night, a tale of enigmatic orbs, the eerie depths of the woods, and a mystery that defies rational explanation. Let us journey back to a moonlit evening, a night shrouded in mystery, deep within the heart of the Pacific Northwest. I, a humble park ranger, found myself in the secluded depths of the towering Cascade Mountains. These ancient peaks loomed over me, their majestic forms veiled by mist, their secrets whispered by the wind through the ancient trees. This night was unlike any other, for a sense of anticipation hung in the air, electrifying my senses and quickening my pulse. My routine patrol had brought me to a remote trailhead, where I stood surrounded by a hushed symphony of nature, the rustling leaves, the distant cry of nocturnal creatures, and the gentle murmur of a nearby stream. It was as if the very forest held its breath, as if it sensed something extraordinary about to unfold. As I navigated the path, my flashlight casting a feeble glow before me, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. My steps quickened, each crunch of leaves beneath my boots echoing like a distant drumbeat. And then, just as I reached the crest of a small rise, I saw them, orbs of light, like luminous beacons, dancing in the distance. My heart raced, and a thrill of exhilaration surged through my veins. These orbs were like nothing I'd ever seen before, ethereal and captivating. They flickered and swayed, casting an otherworldly glow that illuminated the surrounding foliage in an eerie, greenish hue. My breath caught in my throat as I watched their mesmerizing dance, unable to tear my gaze away. As I approached cautiously, the orbs seemed to shift and move, almost as if they were alive. It was as if they held some secret knowledge, a profound connection to the very essence of the forest itself. I extended my hand, feeling a tingling sensation as I reached out to touch one of the orbs. But just as my fingers brushed against its surface, the orbs vanished into thin air, leaving me standing there, both exhilarated and baffled. My mind raced with questions, theories, and possibilities. Were these orbs some form of natural phenomenon? Or could they be a sign of something more otherworldly, a glimpse into a realm beyond our comprehension? The forest held its secrets close, refusing to reveal its truths. Undeterred, I continued my journey deeper into the woods, my curiosity ignited like a wildfire. The night seemed to stretch on forever, each moment pregnant with the promise of discovery. As I trekked further, the forest grew denser, the trees closing in like sentinels guarding an ancient, forbidden realm. And then, as if summoned by the very energy of the forest, I stumbled upon a clearing unlike any I'd ever seen. The ground was carpeted with vibrant moss, and an otherworldly mist swirled around me, casting an ethereal glow that seemed to blur the boundaries between reality and dreams. In the center of the clearing stood an ancient, gnarled oak tree, its branches reaching skyward like the hands of a wizened sage. As I approached the tree, a sense of reverence washed over me, as if I stood in the presence of something ancient and sacred. And then, nestled within the cradle of the oak's roots, I saw them, the orbs, aglow with an intensity that seemed to pierce the veil of reality itself. I reached out once again, my fingers brushing against the surface of the orbs. This time, I felt a surge of energy, a connection that resonated deep within my soul. It was as if the orbs were communicating, sharing their secrets with me in a language beyond words. Images flashed before my mind's eye, visions of untamed landscapes, distant galaxies, and realms of existence that defied all logic. And then, just as quickly as they had appeared, the orbs faded away, leaving me standing there, trembling with a mixture of awe and trepidation. What had I just experienced? Had I tapped into some ancient cosmic knowledge, or had the forest played a trick on my senses? I made my way back to the trailhead, my thoughts a whirlwind of emotions and questions. 
The night had been a symphony of the surreal, a dance with the mysterious forces that lingered just beyond the edges of our understanding. As dawn broke, casting its gentle light upon the world, I knew that my encounter with the luminous orbs would forever shape the course of my life. In the days that followed, I delved deep into research, scouring books, scientific journals, and ancient legends in search of answers. I discovered accounts of similar orbs witnessed by explorers, mystics, and scientists across the ages. These orbs were often associated with profound insights, heightened states of consciousness, and even claims of time dilation and altered realities. But the forest held its secrets close, and the true nature of the orbs remained elusive. Some speculated that they were manifestations of the Earth's energy, glimpses into parallel dimensions, or even sentient beings from beyond our realm. Others dismissed them as mere atmospheric phenomena or tricks of the mind. As the years passed, I became consumed by a thirst for understanding, a burning desire to unravel the enigma of the luminous orbs. I embarked on countless expeditions, journeying to remote corners of the globe, from ancient ruins to sacred forests, seeking to unlock the mysteries that had captivated my thoughts. But the orbs remained as elusive as ever, appearing only fleetingly, like fleeting phantoms in the night. Each encounter left me with more questions than answers, a trail of breadcrumbs leading me deeper into the labyrinth of the unknown. And as time marched on, I came to realize that perhaps the true nature of the orbs was not meant to be unraveled, that their purpose was to inspire wonder, to ignite the spark of curiosity within us all. Hey there, fellow Redditors. Gather round and brace yourselves for a spine-tingling tale that'll leave you questioning the shadows that lurk just beyond our everyday reality. I've got a story to share, a personal account that will have you double-checking every rustle of leaves and every flicker of movement the next time you find yourself alone in the woods. So sit back, grab your favorite snack, and let me take you on a journey into the heart of darkness, a journey that began with my life as a park ranger in the remote woods of northern Maine. Picture this. It was the summer of 2008, a year that seemed innocent enough, but little did I know that it would forever alter the course of my life. I was stationed at the quaint yet secluded Timberlake National Park, a sprawling expanse of towering pines, pristine lakes, and tranquil trails. The place had an air of serene beauty, the kind that could lull you into a sense of safety even as it concealed secrets far more sinister. My days were spent patrolling the park, guiding curious hikers, and making sure campers didn't leave behind their trash. It was a routine that I'd grown comfortable with, that is, until the day I stumbled upon something that turned my perception of the world upside down. It was a scorching August afternoon when I received a peculiar radio transmission from my colleague, Mike. He'd been out on a solo expedition deep within the woods, researching local flora and fauna. His voice trembled as he described something he'd come across, an abandoned campsite with equipment that looked strangely high-tech, far beyond anything you'd expect to find in these rustic woods. I wasted no time. My curiosity and concern led me to grab my gear and head in Mike's direction, my heart pounding with a mixture of excitement and dread. As I ventured further into the forest, the air grew thick with an unnerving tension, a feeling that I was about to peel back a layer of reality I wasn't meant to witness. I eventually stumbled upon the campsite Mike had described, and what I saw sent a shiver down my spine. The equipment scattered around was indeed advanced, with sleek metallic surfaces and blinking lights that seemed to pulse in rhythm with the beating of my heart. But it wasn't just the technology that set off alarm bells in my mind, it was the unsettling feeling that we were not alone. As I cautiously explored the area, I caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of my eye. My heart skipped a beat as I turned my head, and there it was, a figure clad in a lab coat, fiddling with one of the devices. I could feel my pulse quicken as I drew closer, my footsteps barely making a sound on the forest floor. Hey! I called out, my voice laced with a mix of authority and unease. The figure's head snapped up, and I could see their eyes widen beneath their protective goggles. Who are you? What are you doing here? The person, a man, hesitated for a moment before turning to face me. His expression was a mix of surprise and frustration, as if he'd been caught red-handed. I could ask you the same question, he retorted, his tone dripping with an air of superiority. 
I introduced myself as a park ranger and demanded an explanation for his presence. He sighed, seemingly resigned to the fact that his secret had been unveiled. I'm Dr. Alexander Reed, he confessed. I work for a government agency tasked with research and development of advanced technologies. My mind raced, trying to make sense of the situation. What was a government scientist doing in the middle of the woods, far from any research facility or military installation? And what were these mysterious devices he was tinkering with? Dr. Reed's demeanor shifted, his expression growing darker. He explained that the equipment was part of an experiment, a project aimed at manipulating the environment and harnessing natural resources in ways that defied comprehension. It was a claim that left me both intrigued and deeply unsettled. He spoke of energy sources that could change the world, of hidden agendas and classified objectives. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the campsite, Dr. Reed reluctantly invited me to sit and talk. He revealed that the project, codenamed Project Gaia, was intended to reshape ecosystems, control weather patterns, and tap into new sources of energy that could reshape the very fabric of society. I listened in a mixture of fascination and horror as he described experiments involving the alteration of plant growth, the manipulation of atmospheric conditions, and the harvesting of energy from sources unknown. The implications were staggering, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding, as if Pandora's box had been opened wide. But the true terror of the situation was yet to reveal itself. Dr. Reed's voice grew hushed as he shared his suspicions of something far more insidious at play. He claimed that the experiments had unexpected side effects, disturbances in the natural order, mutations in plant and animal life, and anomalies that hinted at a power beyond human understanding. It was then that he made a chilling confession. He spoke of whispers in the wind, of voices that echoed through the trees, carrying messages that seemed to seep into his mind. He described strange apparitions, ghostly figures that materialized in the dead of night, their eyes shining with an otherworldly glow. And then there were the orbs, luminous spheres of light that seemed to dance on the edges of reality, their presence both mesmerizing and menacing. I could feel a shiver crawl down my spine as I listened to Dr. Reed's account. The woods that had once been a source of solace now felt like a realm of the unknown, a canvas upon which humanity's hubris had painted a tapestry of danger and darkness. As the night wore on, Dr. Reed's words began to take on an almost feverish quality. He spoke of a growing paranoia, of a sense that he was being watched, monitored by unseen forces that sought to control and manipulate the very fabric of his mind. He claimed that his superiors were not to be trusted, that the true nature of Project Gaia had been distorted and corrupted by a shadowy cabal with their own hidden agendas. His voice grew more frantic, his eyes wild with a mixture of fear and desperation. He pleaded with me to help him expose the truth, to unveil the dark underbelly of the project and bring an end to the experiments that had unleashed chaos upon the natural world. And then, just as suddenly as he'd appeared, Dr. Reed vanished into the night, leaving me alone with a campsite littered with evidence of a government experiment gone awry. The air seemed to crackle with an electric charge, a tangible sense of danger that lingered like a storm on the horizon. I returned to the ranger station, my mind racing with a torrent of emotions. What had I stumbled upon? Was Dr. Reed a whistleblower, a victim of his own curiosity, or something more sinister? And what were the orbs, the whispers, and the ghostly figures that seemed to haunt his every waking moment? As I delved deeper into my own investigation, I uncovered a labyrinth of deceit and cover-ups that spanned decades. I connected the dots between Project Gaia and a web of government agencies, classified documents, and hidden agendas that hinted at a power struggle beyond imagination. But the deeper I dug, the more dangerous the waters became. I received anonymous threats, my every move seemingly monitored by unseen eyes. The whispers in the wind grew louder, the forest itself seeming to conspire against me. I knew that I was treading on thin ice, that the truth I sought came at a price, a price that could cost me my sanity, my freedom, or even my life. And then, just as I was on the cusp of unraveling the truth, disaster struck. The forest erupted in flames, a raging inferno that consumed everything in its path. The ranger station, the campsite, and any evidence of Project Gaia were reduced to ashes, leaving nothing but a scorched landscape in its wake. 
I barely escaped with my life. My lungs filled with smoke, my heart heavy with the weight of the secrets I'd uncovered. The government's cover-up was complete, its tendrils of deception reaching even into the very heart of nature itself. The forest that had once been a sanctuary had become a battleground, a testament to the lengths those in power would go to protect their darkest secrets. I fled the woods, haunted by the memories of that fateful summer, the whispers, the orbs, and the chilling revelation of humanity's capacity for manipulation and destruction. I knew that the truth was out there, waiting to be uncovered by those brave enough to seek it, but I also knew that the path ahead was treacherous and fraught with danger. The truth may be buried, obscured by lies and deception, but the echoes of that summer still reverberate within me, a reminder that the darkness that dwells within humanity's heart can be as terrifying as any ghost or monster. So the next time you find yourself alone in the woods, remember, the trees may whisper secrets, and the shadows may hold untold truths. Settle in, because I've got a story that'll make your hair stand on end and your heart race like it's running a marathon. I'm a park ranger, stationed in the heart of the sprawling wilderness in the mountains of western North Carolina. My job has always been about embracing the great outdoors, connecting with nature's rhythms, and ensuring that both humans and wildlife coexist in harmony. But there's one part of my job that I've never quite been able to shake, a watchtower that overlooks the vast expanse of the forest, a sentinel that has seen things that defy explanation. Let's rewind to a chilly autumn night in 2015. The kind of night where the moon casts its silvery glow upon the landscape, and the rustling leaves create a symphony of whispers. I was stationed at the Little River Watchtower, perched high above the treetops, my only company the stars that glittered like diamonds in the inky sky. It was a solitary existence, a chance to embrace the quietude of the night and be an unseen observer of the wild. As the hours ticked away, a sense of anticipation hung in the air. It was a feeling that had become almost routine, the unspoken understanding that the night had its secrets, its mysteries that only those who dared venture into the shadows could uncover. But there was something different about that night, something that set my nerves on edge. From my vantage point, I had an unobstructed view of the forest, its trees swaying in the breeze like sentinels guarding a forgotten realm. The air was still, save for the occasional hoot of an owl or the rustle of leaves as a small creature scurried by. But then, something caught my attention, a faint, flickering light in the distance. I squinted, my heart skipping a beat as the light danced and swayed, as if beckoning me into the depths of the forest. My first instinct was to dismiss it as a trick of the light, a firefly or a distant headlight. But there was an eeriness to it, a sense that this light was something more, something that didn't quite belong to the realm of the natural. As I watched, the light seemed to grow brighter, casting an unnatural glow that illuminated the surrounding trees. It moved with a purpose, weaving through the undergrowth, like a will-o'-the-wisp leading travelers astray. My curiosity was piqued, my rational mind warring with a primal instinct that whispered of danger. But here's the kicker, I never ventured out to explore it myself. Call me a coward, call me a wise man, but there was something about that light that made my skin crawl, a gut feeling that told me I should keep my distance. Instead, I picked up my journal, grabbed my binoculars, and began to document the events unfolding before me. The light moved with an almost hypnotic rhythm, its glow casting strange patterns upon the forest floor. I could feel my heart racing as I observed, my fingers gripping the pen tightly as I scribbled down every detail, every movement. And then, just as quickly as it had appeared, the light vanished, leaving me alone in the watchtower, the only witness to its enigmatic dance. Over the months that followed, the watchtower became a stage for otherworldly performances. I'd spend countless nights perched high above the wilderness, my journal at the ready, my senses heightened to every flicker and movement below. I saw lights that twisted and twirled like ethereal dancers, orbs that floated on the breeze like wisps of smoke, and shadows that seemed to flip between the trees, vanishing before I could fully comprehend what I'd seen. There was one incident that still sends shivers down my spine. It was a moonless night, the darkness almost suffocating in its intensity. As I scanned the tree line, my eyes locked onto a figure, a humanoid silhouette, standing amongst the trees. My heart leapt into my throat, my hand trembling as I reached for my binoculars. 
the figure was tall, impossibly so, its proportions elongated and distorted. Its head seemed too large for its body, its limbs stretched like taffy. I could see no features, no facial details, just an unsettling presence that seemed to exude a malevolent energy. My breath caught as I watched it sway gently, as if it were caught in an invisible breeze. Fear and curiosity battled within me. Every instinct told me to flee, to retreat from this aberration, this entity that defied all logic. But I couldn't tear my gaze away, as if I were under some sort of hypnotic spell. And then, with a suddenness that left me gasping, the figure dissolved into nothingness, leaving behind an empty void that seemed to linger in the air. I had witnessed things that night, things that defied all explanation, that challenged the very foundation of reality itself. And yet, I remained rooted to the spot, my heart racing, my mind grappling with the enormity of what I'd seen. As the years went by, I continued to document these bizarre occurrences, each incident etching itself into my memory like a scar. The lights, the figures, the whispers, they became a part of my nightly routine, a surreal dance that played out against the backdrop of the forest's eternal silence. I found solace in my journal, my only confidant in a world that would dismiss my accounts as the ramblings of a sleep-deprived mind. The pages were filled with sketches, descriptions, and my own attempts to decipher the meaning behind these phenomena. I researched ancient myths, modern folklore, and even delved into the realm of conspiracy theories, searching for a thread that could connect these disparate threads of strangeness. And then, one fateful night, as I sat in the watchtower, my pen poised over my journal, a sudden stillness settled over the forest. It was as if the very air held its breath, as if nature itself was anticipating an event of profound significance. And then, a sound, a whisper, so faint that it could have been mistaken for the rustle of leaves. I strained my ears, my heart pounding in my chest, as if it were trying to escape its cage. The whisper grew louder, a cacophony of voices that seemed to emerge from the very air itself. It was a symphony of unintelligible words, a chorus of murmurs that danced on the edges of my consciousness. I closed my eyes, trying to make sense of the voices, trying to discern patterns or meanings. But it was like trying to catch smoke with my bare hands, the words slipped through my grasp, leaving me with a sense of frustration and dread. And then, just as suddenly as they'd appeared, the voices faded away, leaving me in an almost oppressive silence. That night marked a turning point for me. The watchtower, once a place of solace and sanctuary, had become a theater for the unexplainable, a stage for phenomena that defied logic and reason. I knew that I could no longer remain a passive observer, that I had to delve deeper into the heart of these mysteries, to uncover the truth that lay hidden beneath the surface. But I also knew the risks, the potential for madness, for discovery that could shatter the very foundations of my reality. I had heard the whispers, seen the lights, and witnessed the figures, and each encounter had left an indelible mark on my psyche. And yet, the allure of the unknown, the need to peel back the layers of reality and peer into the abyss, was too strong to resist. So here I am, sharing my story with you, my fellow Redditors. A tale of a park ranger who stood on the precipice of the inexplicable, who witnessed things that defied all comprehension from the watchtower at night. I've been a park ranger for years, patrolling the wild landscapes of the Pacific Northwest, but what I'm about to share with you is a journey into the heart of darkness, a journey that began with cryptids, secrets, and a training that defied all logic. Picture this. It was the summer of 2013, a year that held the promise of adventure and the thrill of the unknown. I was stationed at the Serene Woodland Pines National Park, nestled within the lush wilderness of Oregon. The park seemed like any other, a haven for hikers, campers, and nature enthusiasts. But beneath its tranquil exterior, something sinister was brewing. I was approached by a man in a suit, his demeanor as enigmatic as his purpose. He introduced himself as Agent Foster, claiming to be a liaison from a government agency tasked with investigating unusual phenomena. He spoke in hushed tones, his words laden with an air of intrigue. We need your help, he said, his eyes locking onto mine with an intensity that sent a shiver down my spine. At first, I thought it was a joke, a prank pulled by my colleagues to test my gullibility. 
I mean, cryptids, creatures like Bigfoot, the Mothman, and the Chupacabra were the stuff of legends and campfire tales. But Agent Foster was dead serious, his words laced with a gravity that left no room for doubt. He explained that the park was a hotspot for cryptid sightings, that there were forces at play beyond our comprehension. And they needed someone on the inside, someone who could navigate the wilds and uncover the truth behind these elusive creatures. That someone, it seemed, was me. My training began almost immediately, and let me tell you, it was like stepping into a surreal nightmare. I was subjected to rigorous physical tests, endurance challenges that pushed me to my limits. I underwent survival training, learning to track and navigate the wilderness with an almost uncanny instinct. And then there were the psychological tests, the simulations that blurred the lines between reality and illusion, designed to sharpen my mind and prepare me for the mysteries that awaited. But the most baffling part? The cryptid-specific training. I was taught to recognize signs of their presence, footprints, scat, even the faintest traces of their elusive scent. I learned to distinguish their calls, their cries that echoed through the night like haunting melodies. And then there were the weapons, tranquilizer darts, specialized equipment, all geared towards capturing these enigmatic creatures. At first, it all felt like an elaborate prank, a series of mind games designed to mess with my head. I questioned the logic, the reasoning behind training a park ranger to hunt down mythical beings. And yet, as the weeks went by, as I immersed myself in the training, a sense of unease settled over me. There were whispers, rumors that hinted at a darker truth. Whispers of a shadowy organization that operated beyond the boundaries of government oversight, a group that pulled the strings from the shadows, manipulating events and controlling knowledge. Whispers that suggested the cryptids were not mere legends, but something far more complex and sinister. And then, one night, everything changed. I was on a routine patrol, my senses heightened by months of training and anticipation. I could feel the weight of the tranquilizer gun in my hands, my heart pounding as I moved through the undergrowth, every rustle of leaves sending a jolt of adrenaline through my veins. And then I saw it, a figure, looming in the distance, its massive form shrouded in darkness. It was Bigfoot, the elusive creature that had become a symbol of the cryptid world. My breath caught in my throat as I raised my tranquilizer gun, my training kicking in as I took aim. But as I looked through the scope, something felt off. The creature's eyes, they held a depth, an intelligence that seemed to pierce through the night. And then, with a speed that defied its massive size, it vanished into the trees, leaving me standing there, my heart racing, my mind grappling with what I'd just witnessed. I returned to base, my mind a whirlwind of confusion and doubt. Agent Foster was waiting, his expression unreadable. Did you see it? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. I nodded, my words failing me as I struggled to process the encounter. He leaned in, his eyes locked onto mine, and he whispered words that sent a chill down my spine. They're real, and they're not what you think. We're dealing with forces beyond our understanding, and you're our best chance at unraveling the truth. And just like that, I was thrust deeper into the rabbit hole, my training taking on a new urgency. I spent nights patrolling the woods, my senses honed to the slightest hint of movement or sound. I followed trails of footprints that seemed to defy logic, encountering signs of the cryptid's presence that left me both exhilarated and terrified. But with each encounter, with each piece of evidence I gathered, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. The cryptids were not mere beasts, they were something else, something that transcended our understanding of the natural world. And the government, it seemed, was desperate to harness their power, to unlock their secrets for their own sinister purposes. I began to document my findings, keeping meticulous records of each encounter, each piece of evidence. I reached out to fellow researchers, to those who had dedicated their lives to uncovering the truth behind the cryptids. Together, we pieced together a narrative that was both exhilarating and terrifying, a narrative of experimentation, manipulation, and a conspiracy that spanned generations. As the years went by, my quest for the truth consumed me. I ventured into the heart of the wilderness, encountering creatures that defied all logic, witnessing phenomena that left me awestruck and humbled. 
But I also saw the darker side, the government operatives, the secret facilities hidden beneath the surface, the experiments that sought to bend the cryptids' powers to their will. And then, one fateful night, as I stood on the precipice of a revelation, I was confronted by Agent Foster once again. His expression was grave, his words laden with a sense of finality. You know too much, he said, his voice like a knife cutting through the air. He revealed the full extent of the conspiracy. The cryptids were not just creatures, but living conduits of power, beings that held the key to unlocking new realms of understanding. And the government, it seemed, was willing to go to any lengths to harness that power, even if it meant sacrificing the very fabric of our reality. But I refused to be a pawn in their game. With a surge of determination, I confronted Agent Foster, my tranquilizer gun raised in defiance. We stood there, locked in a tense standoff, our eyes locked onto each other. And then, with a speed that belied his age, Agent Foster moved, his movements like a blur as he lunged at me. The shot rang out, the tranquilizer dart finding its mark. But as the darkness closed in around me, I felt a sense of satisfaction, a feeling that I had uncovered the truth and taken a stand against the forces that sought to control it. When I awoke, I was in a different world, a world of shadows and secrets, where the line between reality and illusion was blurred beyond recognition. I had become a fugitive, a man on the run from the very government I had once served. But I was also a seeker of the truth, a beacon of light in a world shrouded in darkness. So here I am, sharing my story with you, my fellow Redditors. A story of cryptids, government conspiracies, and a park ranger who became entangled in a web of intrigue and danger. A story of whispers in the woods, creatures that defied explanation, and a quest for the truth that took me to the edge of sanity and back. As I continue my journey, my mission to uncover the secrets that lie hidden in the shadows, I can't help but wonder, what else is out there? What other mysteries are waiting to be uncovered? What other forces are at play beyond our understanding? The cryptids may be elusive, their nature shrouded in enigma, but one thing is certain, the quest for the truth is a journey that will forever haunt my nights and drive me to the brink of discovery. So the next time you find yourself in the wilderness, remember, the woods may hold secrets beyond your wildest imagination, and the cryptids may be closer than you think. Greetings, fellow curious minds and intrepid explorers of the unknown. Prepare yourselves for a tale that will grip your imagination and pull you into a world where reality blurs with the surreal. I'm a park ranger stationed at the edge of the Black Hollow Forest in the heart of West Virginia. What I'm about to share with you is a journey that led me deep into the earth, a descent into darkness and a discovery that defied all reason. Imagine a crisp autumn morning in 2010, when the leaves had turned to a fiery tapestry of reds and oranges, and a sense of mystery lingered in the air. The Black Hollow Forest had always been a place of intrigue, with whispers of legends and eerie tales that echoed through the small Appalachian town nearby. It was a place where ancient trees seemed to guard secrets, and the shadows held stories untold. One day, while patrolling the forest's edge, I stumbled upon a weathered map tucked away in the hollow of a tree. The map depicted a network of abandoned mines that crisscrossed the forest, a relic of a bygone era when coal was king. The map had an aura of foreboding about it, as if it held the key to unlocking a hidden realm beneath the surface. As I studied the map, a voice whispered in my ear, a voice that seemed to come from the very depths of the earth itself. The mines hold secrets, it seemed to say, a siren's call that stirred a mix of trepidation and curiosity within me. And so, fueled by a sense of destiny, I embarked on a journey to explore the abandoned mines, to uncover the truth that lay hidden beneath the surface. The first mine I entered was like stepping into a time capsule, a portal to a forgotten era of industry and toil. The air was heavy with a damp earthy scent, and the sound of dripping water echoed through the tunnels like haunting melodies. My flashlight cast elongated shadows on the walls, and I could feel the weight of the darkness pressing in around me. I followed the labyrinthine passages, my steps echoing in the silence, my heart racing with a mixture of excitement and unease. As I ventured deeper, I began to notice something strange, the walls seemed to shimmer and shift, as if they were alive, as if the very rock itself held a secret energy. And then, 
I stumbled upon a chamber that left me breathless, a chamber unlike anything I'd ever seen. The walls were adorned with intricate carvings, symbols that seemed to dance with an otherworldly light. The air crackled with a palpable energy, and I could feel a sense of awe and reverence wash over me. As I studied the carvings, a realization dawned upon me. They depicted creatures that defied all logic, beings that seemed to blend the natural and the supernatural. There were creatures with wings, creatures with multiple limbs, creatures with eyes that gleamed like stars. It was as if I'd stumbled upon a cosmic bestiary, a record of beings that existed beyond the realm of human understanding. But the most chilling discovery was yet to come. At the heart of the chamber lay an ancient tome, its pages brittle with age, its words written in a language that seemed to vibrate with power. As I flipped through the pages, a sense of dread settled over me. The tome contained descriptions, rituals, and incantations, all aimed at summoning and communicating with these enigmatic beings. I knew then that I had stumbled upon something beyond my comprehension, something that had the power to reshape reality itself. And as I delved deeper into the minds, I began to realize that I was not alone in my quest for knowledge. I encountered others, shadowy figures that seemed to materialize out of thin air, their eyes gleaming with an otherworldly light. They spoke in hushed tones, revealing themselves to be members of a secret society that had been dedicated to unraveling the mysteries of the minds for generations. They spoke of a cosmic connection, a link between the creatures depicted in the carvings and ancient cosmic forces that held sway over the universe. But they also spoke of a warning, a warning that the knowledge contained within the tome was not meant for human hands, that its power was a double-edged sword that could unleash chaos and destruction upon the world. They urged me to abandon my quest, to leave the minds untouched and allow the secrets to remain buried. And yet, the allure of the unknown was too strong to resist. I continued my exploration, my interactions with the enigmatic society becoming more frequent and intense. They revealed their name, the Order of the Abyss, and their belief that the minds held a gateway to other dimensions, a portal that could bridge the gap between our world and the cosmic entities that dwelled beyond. As the years went by, my obsession grew, my interactions with the Order of the Abyss becoming more complex and intertwined. I delved deeper into the rituals, the incantations, the summonings, and I began to sense a shift within myself, a connection to forces that defied comprehension, a power that both exhilarated and terrified me. And then, one fateful night, as I stood at the heart of the chamber, surrounded by the symbols and the tome, I felt a surge of energy, a force that seemed to emanate from the very depths of the earth. The air crackled with electricity, and I could feel a presence, an entity that was both ancient and timeless, a being that defied all description. It spoke to me, its voice a symphony of whispers that echoed in my mind. It revealed truths that shattered the boundaries of my reality, unveiling a cosmic tapestry that wove together worlds and dimensions beyond imagining. It spoke of a choice, a choice that would determine the fate of not just our world, but the entire cosmos. I stood there, at the precipice of a revelation, my heart pounding, my mind racing. And then, with a sense of clarity that transcended the physical, I made my decision. I closed the tome, stepped away from the symbols, and walked away from the chamber, leaving behind the power and the knowledge that had consumed me for years. I returned to the surface, my heart heavy with a sense of both loss and liberation. The Black Hollow Forest had held its secrets, and I had glimpsed the enigmatic forces that lay hidden beneath the surface. But I had also realized the danger, the danger of tampering with forces beyond our understanding, of unleashing powers that could reshape the very fabric of reality.